You know what I miss about smoking cigarettes? Or as my son would say, cigarettes. Blowing smoke rings. You know what I don't miss about smoking? Everything else. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jason Oliveira, and this is The Road to 40. In case you didn't know. <laughs> How you guys doing tonight? Thanks for coming back, as always. Uh, I'm going to try to get this one up tonight. It appears as though if I don't get them up at night, they don't get washed until the following night. So, well, I guess that wouldn't be terrible, timing-wise, because then I'll always just be not rushing. Oh, forgive me. Oh, I'm sorry. Nobody wants to name the chicken. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> His name's Carl. Carl the Microphone Chicken. Okay? I hope that you are satisfied. I hope that you are satisfied. <laughs> if anybody throws anything out there tonight, we'll take it under consideration. But if not, this is Carl the Microphone Chicken. Um, I want to talk a little bit about... I've talked about... I've literally worn this into the ground. But um, I want to talk about not so much just minimum wage, but uh, cost of living from when I was born until now. And I want to do a few mathematical equations for you. In 1975, you, the average, you know, uh, two, three bedroom house was around thirty-nine dollars to $42,000 average. You know, so let's say $40,000. And the annual income, average annual income for family, I believe, uh, was $11,000, almost $12,000. Okay. That's pretty cool. So less than four years' salary buys you a house. That seems pretty fair. That seems right and just, doesn't it? I think it does. Hmm. All right, now let's take a look at uh, <laughs> 2014. 2014. Now, I'm not saying just the minimum wage. Let's say the average household, they say, they say, makes what like 45,000 is that what it is right around there so by that rationale an average house now is about 270,000 for about the same thing you could get for 40,000 then so that's let's 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 do the math 7 times 4 that's 280 so yeah so 7 times it's gone up the original cost but Let's take a look at my average household. I have five, well, five people. I have three children and two adults. Collectively, we only make about $37,000 a year. That's right. You heard it right. We're scraping to get by. <laughs> now let's do the math there. We have a mortgage. Well, I don't want to make this personal. I'm just using myself as an example. I don't want, I don't want to be like poor me because I'm getting by and I'm happy. And that's all all that matters okay no matter what people tell you about how much money you need to make and how many houses you need and how many cars and how many kids you should have and da -da -da -da, all that matters is that you're happy and if the lights go out and you're still happy what else matters <laughs> there goes the road to 40 now um so based on that like four years of our salary is about a hundred and well, let's see. Well, let's let's say it's forty thousand. So four times four would be one hundred sixty thousand. So we're still one hundred and twenty thousand shy. So that's like you're still having you're having to make more money. Uh, you know what? I, I think you get the point. I've been saying this and pounding it home for years, and they keep shooting down the minimum wage hike here. And the minimum wage hike, like I've said in the past, is nothing. Like they want to bring it to like ten or. Uh, some places have it. Is, is high, the highest I know of is like 15. And that's like, still. <laughs> we should be making like, uh, the minimum wage should be about, I don't know, $27 an hour. Yeah. that Because uh, otherwise, how are you supposed to afford either A, a mortgage and or a rental, B, maybe a car payment, maybe school, <laughs> school uh, loan. You know what I mean? You end up just digging yourself into a hole and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, I'd literally have to make like a hundred and something thousand a year to be able to even consider like buying a new house, selling this one, and like getting new cars for me and Carol and so on and so forth. And I'm like, wow, 
So basically, I can either settle for something where I'm still going to be in the same position, or I need to shoot for the stars. Let's shoot for the stars, that's what I say, and see what happens. Shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. Isn't that how the saying goes? I don't know who said that. Who said it? <laughs> who said that? <laughs> They're not in the room. I'm going to cut this a little short tonight. Not right now, but Carol, my wife, has been really, uh, had a horrible sore throat. She said, other than the sore throat, she feels fine. But it's pretty bad because she never complains about anything like when she's sick. Like, I am a little sissy. I whine and piss and moan if I have, you know, a little cough. <laughs> but she's a trooper. And so this is really hitting her hard, and I feel really bad, and there's nothing I can do. And, like, I've bought lozenges, and I've bought cough drops, and we've tried chloroseptic spray. And um, she got prescribed antibiotics today, thank thank God, or Buddha or whoever, um, because... She hopefully, if it is like strep throat or something like that, that'll knock it out. Without it, it's not going anywhere. And the problem is, is that everybody like thinks that they have the same thing last week, but it's not true. Like <laughs> it affects people differently. And whatever it was that you had probably isn't what Carol has because <laughs> she's not doing well, and it's disappointing and, and angering. So I'm very thankful for Doctor. I don't know if I should say his name on here, but he's a good man. Um, and so he prescribed the antibiotics, even without doing the strep test. So hopefully that'll knock it out and we're good to go. But even just before the prescription today, I was thinking, like, this is, like, Carol gets paid tomorrow. We live paycheck to paycheck, which is fine. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> I'd like to be more comfortable for my kids' sake, but whatever. We're all happy. We're all having a good time. Um, but, like, even just getting the prescription today, I was just like, uh... I hope we don't eat anything else till tomorrow. <laughs> my tank's on E, my gas light's on. Poor me. Wah, poor me. Me, 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 Dirty diaper. <laughs> Forget it. I wanted to show you a few of these. Um, I sometimes if I get them just on the right angle, there's some little fixes I'll fix in Photoshop, like the size of his freaking giant head. But this actually I probably will have to merge with something else because this is actually the angle I need to get. Damn, damn, shitty poop, pooperson the third. Now. Well, it's a hall, and light has to be pouring into the hall from a doorway down the hall in said scene, and it's not right now. Ooh, maybe we'll draw a little bit tonight afterwards. Uh, and then this is another one. This is a scene where Charlie is looking at a lot of dead body bodies. Now, I know that the uh, webisode actually takes place in Maine, but I had drawn Massachusetts because it's closer to home which was home for a long time and it's new england like i always think of new england as its own state even though i lived there you know a good chunk of my life um here we got charlie in his kitchen again there's there's so many scenes with charlie in the kitchen charlie looking out the window and then you know little things change about it but everything else still has to stay uh perspectively and proportionately the same from picture to picture and this is something I have never challenged myself to do on my own and it's something that I've never been had the need to do so now I'm getting to this point where I'm having to you know do this and I think it's really important because I always wanted to be a comic book artist when I was in high school I don't say I don't think I would want to be um, that well I mean I wouldn't turn it down don't get me wrong but I know I'm not good enough um, but I'm okay with that Hang on a second here. I'm a little busy. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when the skies are gray. I sing that every night to my boys. Um, wow, my phone's actually dying today. It's been a long. I've never had it 
wear down since I've gotten it. I've had it about a month now. Never gotten to the point where I went to the yellow. Damn, we're in new territory here. What are we supposed to do? Okay, so that's it for tonight, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, tomorrow I'll come back with a with a doozy. But I knew tonight Carol wasn't feeling well. I had to put the boys down tonight. We actually just talked for 20 minutes, a half hour. It was awesome. And then I sang songs. And by the time I was into like the second song, Griffin was snoring. I was like, dang, I, I really enjoyed it. He cuddled the whole time. It was just a good night putting the boys down. There's bad nights. There's really bad nights <laughs> where they don't want to go to bed. They don't want to brush their teeth. They want. They, if I don't get juice or milk, it's not happening. Ooh. <laughs> Tonight was a really good night. So um, on that note, I hope you guys have a great night. I hope you're loving them, loving watching these like I'm loving making them. Because uh, I wouldn't trade it, uh, and I refuse to trade it. Even if I'm sick, I'll be here sick with my robe on. I can't wait, like... It's funny. I know this is going to sound really geeky before I let you go. Like, I like black v-neck t-shirts. I wear a lot of them, if you haven't noticed. I've got gray and black. Most of them are black. And when, I, when those are all dirty or the armpits are worn out on them, <laughs> i got to switch back to some of my older t-shirts. And it's always disappointing. Like, I, I have a few Superman shirts that I like, but they're starting to get old, too. But black v-necks. So, <laughs> that's the season. In the summer, it's going to be V-necks. It might be white, it might be black. It might have a few t-shirts thrown into the mix. But with the changing of season comes with changing of, of attire. I feel like the set is going to have to undergo a major change. What I think I want to do is rip everything out of this room, clean it. Even if I don't change anything, maybe just hang some new art. Turn the desk to a new position and uh, just get some new, new, new look. You know, move some shit around. I'm sure you guys are getting bored of seeing the same stuff. Hey, Mr. Lebowski, how you doing? Yeah. For your own sake, I promise you, there will be a change, a change of coming. I don't know what it's going to be, but we'll do something fun and exciting and maybe some new lighting or something. I don't know. I've tried other, like, multicolored lights, but nothing seems to really just, eh. I do miss the Christmas lights. We'll have those back up. I'll have a shit ton of them. After Christmas, oh, God. We'll probably light the whole set with Christmas lights because they get so cheap. I remember I got them at Target one year. 19 cents. I bought a fuck ton. That's an actual unit of measure here in the United States, too, if you look it up. A fuck ton. No. All right. Have a great night. Thank you for coming back. Uh, please subscribe and pass them along to anybody else who you think might like them. If they're 39, that would probably be ideal. Um, don't forget to make someone smile tomorrow. Make yourself a better person tomorrow than you were today tomorrow. And let's make the world spin a little bit happier together. I'm Jason Oliver. This is The Road to 40. Um, thank you guys for everything, honestly. You guys have a great night. I'll see you a little further on down the road to 40.